Thank you very much. Happy to uh, happy to be here. So that, that was a, that was a great intro. All right, guys. So thank you very much for joining. Super psyched uh, to be back. Uh, we have a new presentation. The first time we're doing this presentation in a uh, in a, at a public conference. We're going to be talking about crypto asset price predictions, which is sort of a myth, right? Can we really predict? Uh, the price of Bitcoin, Ether, and, uh, uh, and and other crypto assets. So I'm gonna walk you through a lot of things that we that we have tried and a lot of lessons uh, that we learned on trying to solve this problem at into the blog and what are the things that you can apply uh, for for yourself. So uh, the, the the intro was uh, the initial intro was way better. Uh, that uh, um, that I, I could have done. So, uh, quick background: I'm a computer scientist by trade, uh, ex um, um, uh, Microsoft, uh, ex uh, Wall Street. Uh, these days, I'm spending a lot of time uh, building into a blog that is an analytics platform that we focus on applying uh, data science, data science for crypto assets. I'm a guest lecturer at Columbia University uh, and uh, and a very active uh, angel investor. If you don't know about into the blog. Uh, we provide analytics for retail and institutional investors using real data science. We mine over 10 terabytes of data. And here's a little bit of a snapshot of our customer base. You, you can see that it includes some of the top brands uh, in the space. The company is, is relatively new, but it has been growing uh, extremely fast. But we're not here to talk about into the block. So what we, uh, I wanna, um, the focus of the presentation is to discuss um, Prediction models for crypto assets. Are they possible? How can you do it? What are what are results that you should expect? And what are the things, what are practical lessons uh, that you should be uh, that you should be aware of? And, and then we're gonna do that from the perspective of what we have uh, done at uh, at ITV, what we have learned through many, many failures of trying to solve this uh, uh, these problems. Uh, so predictions is the, when you think about price predictions, particularly for retail investors, that's the ultimate expression of crypto analytics. That's what most people care about. A few months ago, uh, just to set the context of why we probably have some, some uh, real experience on trying to do this. Uh, so into the blog is a team uh, of, uh, uh, with a very heavy machine learning, deep learning uh, background. So uh, about eight months ago, we we tried to tackle this problem of trying to pr to build predictive models for crypto assets for our audience. So we wanted you that if you go to Binance or CoinMarketCap, you were able to see some predictive directional prediction models. And initially, we wanted to tackle this with a deep learning approach. So deep neural networks, the newest trend in artificial intelligence is this type of very interconnected hierarchical uh, structure in which it is able to infer nonlinear relationships between all sorts of variables. And they tend to be very resilient uh, to, uh, to market conditions. So many quant funds are starting to gravitate towards uh, this approach. And we thought it made, uh, it made a ton of sense. So, uh, and also initially we decided to focus on order books models because that's where you could find the bulk of the research in the space. When when you look at crypto uh, and you look at the data sources that we can use for predictions, we can think about blockchain data sources, derivative order books. Definitely, there is a larger body of research in the order book space. So for a bunch of months, we try over 120 models, four terabytes of training data, and we were not getting anywhere until we did a few things that started to work. And at the, at the, the end of last year, we ended up with a number of models, one that is predicting, is able to predict uh, the, the bullish or bearish momentum in Bitcoin 60 minutes every hour, one that predicts a bullish or bearish momentum on Bitcoin 60 minutes every five minutes, and one that tries to look for larger variations up to 50 basis points and tries uh, and predict that 60 minutes every, every hour, and we're building a ton more. And it's, it's pretty real, right? So we're working with quant funds building a strategies to trade on these things and the first funds are in production already. So it's not like this is a theoretical exercise. We're actually uh, doing this uh, for real with real money. And then we're launching 
uh, predictions in the Into the Block platform in a few days. So before the end of the quarter, if you got into the block, you're going to be able to have the same predictive mo access to the same predictive models that we have access uh, that we have access to. Uh, so the, the, the only reason I'm telling you this is to set the context. Uh, we put a lot of miles uh, trying to solve this problem and fail a lot, and that gave us some clarity into what works. And, uh, and what doesn't work. So if I, if you're thinking about predictive models for crypto assets, there are three fundamental steps that you should consider. The, the first one is you need to develop a thesis. What are you trying to predict? The second one is a methodology. How are you trying to predict that? With? And finally, once you do that, you need to operationalize the predictions, put it in production, run it at a scale, retrain the models, and, uh, and all those things. So let's take those three steps uh, one by one. So developing a prediction thesis, Can you predict what well, you can predict price, right? Obviously, you can predict direction. Is it going to go up or down? You can predict risk or volatility. You can predict things like factors and like momentum, value across many, many assets. So decide what would you like to, uh, to predict. And then pick a data source. As we said, you can focus on derivative. Combining these things is, is probably a bad idea. So you should pick one. You can focus on derivative, blockchains, uh, order books. Uh, we think the largest, the largest body of research exists in order books, data sets. But certainly, there, is, there are also opportunities in all of them. How, do, how you, sh you should think about that? Well, if you're looking for high-frequency predictions, the bigger predictions that, that output uh, uh, alpha opportunities very frequently, the largest opportunity exists in order book, followed by derivative and blockchains at the, at the moment, uh, is that the predictions are not going to be very frequent. If you're looking for systematic alpha opportunities, so maybe not super high frequency, but with, with very high alpha, the current derivative market offers tons of opportunities, order book, follow blockchain is still very nice in that. If you're looking for unique alpha opportunities, so uh, singular events that have no equivalent in any other uh, asset class, then blockchain is your, your main candidate followed by derivative and other books. We find this diagram very helpful uh, to the way we think, uh, we think about the space. So your second step is to uh, think about a, um, a prediction methodology. And here you have three choices, uh, the, the three uh, traditional ways of doing this in machine learning is time series forecasting, classical machine learning like uh, regression algorithms or, or, or uh, decision trees, and this new school of, of deep learning. What we found is, so we tried a, a lot of things that time series forecasting models such as Arima, DeepR, uh, Profit, they're super easy to implement. You can get it done like in no time. The problem is we found that in crypto that there are so many variations. We found that they're very poorly resilient to the market. And you only you can only use a small number of factors, 10 or 12, to try to predict price. Some of our models are using 120 factors. So that wouldn't be possible uh, to do. And you need to know the predictors ahead of time, which is not always an option. Then the, the biggest implementations of all this exist in traditional machine learning models, such as linear regression of decision trees. There is a ton of research. And, uh, but in the case of crypto, when we tried that, we also found that it was very, very, the resiliency to market conditions, big spikes and all that was not really there. And it was, it was really hard to generalize. So the models would tend to optimize for the training data set and they didn't generalize knowledge. So the newest school of thought of deep learning, deep neural networks, that obviously this is a subset of machine learning, but, but can be seen as a standalone uh, discipline, uh, they're very expensive to build. And most of the time, you don't know what they're doing, right? When they make a prediction, you have no idea uh, how they arrive to that conclusion. But one of the things that they do very well, and one of the things the biggest quant funds in the world are excited about this, is that they find very complex nonlinear relationships between variables. And if you think about markets, markets are very complex. It's not like you can predict price with one, with one attribute. You probably need hundreds of attributes that, that com combine to get a, a, an accurate prediction. So this type of, uh, of a, uh, a new school is getting a lot of traction. Let me try to make uh, the case for this, right? Let me try to expand on that argument and, and try to, to tell you why deep learning is a good idea for predictive uh, strategies. As I said, the first thing is that they, this type of models can uncover 
uh, nonlinear relationships in, to, uh, in the space. The, the, basically, all the research, the 90% of the research that is happening in artificial intelligence is in this field. So you're getting a fresh flow of ideas. And they tend, we have experience that they tend to be very resilient to market conditions. They learn a lot. So the near future of predictive models in the quant world and certainly in crypto is going to be based in deep learning. I mean, there is no doubt. If you have 85, 90% of the research focus on the space, it just makes sense that, uh, uh, that most of the, of, of the implementations are also going to follow, uh, follow that trend. Let me try to put that in context and look at a few features uh, of, of predictive models and a few things that deep learning uh, can do. So, for instance, one of the challenges that you always experience when building predictive models is this thing called uh, you need to decide what are you going to predict with. You're trying to predict price. What are you trying to predict it with? That's called feature extraction. So, for instance, you want to predict uh, price, but uh, looking at an order book is the bid and ask a, a good attribute uh, to predict price. So, in deep learning, there is a new area of research called convolutional neural networks that, that do that. Like, instead of you trying to figure out the attributes by hand and by domain knowledge, imagine if you have a neural network that will figure it out for you. So, you give it the order books and will make 700,000 computations and give you an output that said, these are probably predictors. So, the way convolutional neural networks the, the way they work, they can execute computations in very high dimensions and then reduce it to a small number of dimensions. So that's why you, we typically use it to try to extract uh, predictors. Then another challenge that is very common is selecting the models. So you need to, uh, uh, deep learning and machine learning is very subjective. We rely on the opinion of people. So if you're trying to predict price, let's say with blockchain data sets, uh, and uh, you come to me, I might tell you, oh, this is a recurring neural network. How do you know that's true, right? Uh, maybe I have a preference for those type of things. So instead of doing that, there is a new area of research called neural architecture search that allows you to uh, make the selection of a model a machine learning problem. So instead of saying, oh, we should tackle this problem with this model, we fit it to a neural network saying, we try to predict price with this, and it will try hundreds of models and give you the top 10 and say, these are the best, the, the ones that perform the best. And then you can start optimizing for that. So it's a machine learning approach to machine learning. So uh, it's, uh, that, that is an area that we're super, super excited about. Uh, data accuracy and gaps, this is huge in crypto. The order books in crypto are always missing data. If you're training a model and you get a five minute gaps, the models start, start making stupid predictions. So filling gaps is really hard. And uh, how do you do that? Well, there is an area of research in deep learning called semi-supervised learning that essentially you train, instead of training a model with labeled data sets, you train it with a very small set of, uh, of la labeled data sets, right, of uh, training um, uh, labeled data, and the model is able to generate uh, new examples. And we typically use that to fill gaps in order books. So if we miss five minutes, we look at the previous train, train the model, and it can fill the, the, those five minutes with fake data, but that follow a specific, a specific trend. Knowledge reusability is another huge problem. So we, as humans, we, every time we learn a skill, we reuse all knowledge from our skills. In machine learning, you're learning the set, models are learning the same thing from scratch. So imagine that I train a model to predict price based on trade information, and now I'm going to create another model to predict Bitcoin price based on order books. Can I use part of this knowledge in this, in this new model? There is an area of deep learning research called transfer learning, very new, that is that is reusing, uh, once you have a model that master one skill, reusing subset of those skills to learn new skills. So this is an area that we're, that we're paying a lot of attention to. Finally, another challenge that you're going to encounter when doing this uh, for crypto, uh, training, uh, training coverage and, uh, and acceleration. So imagine something like the March 11 crash. So the price of uh, Bitcoin drops 12% uh, very rapidly. We never seen that before. How can I train a model for that if, if that has never occurred? There is a, an area of research called generative models that essentially you try to, and particularly a subset of this is called uh, uh, adversarial, uh, adversarial neural networks, in which you essentially train a model in a labeled data set and allow it to generate, to see, generate new data sets. So we use that to generate 
uh, new market conditions, simulate new market conditions arbitrarily. Not that we want to simulate a specific use case, but we tell them all, just simulate all sorts of things that make sense. And you encounter situations, you train them all for situations that it hasn't seen uh, before. The reason I'm telling you this is so, so you get an idea how much research is advancing, how much you can really do with this type of models, which is not possible with a statistical or classical machine learning. So let me give you 10 lessons that we learned the hard way that will help you in your journey towards implementing uh, predictive models for crypto assets. Lesson number one, training size matters. So the bigger the training data set today, the better, because the market is very inefficient. We made so many mistakes with this of training models with two, three years of data, and they were not getting any results. And when we expanded to six, seven years, the results were definitely uh, very visible. Be aware that data quality in crypto is a huge problem. Uh, blockchains, uh, sometimes uh, you get large blocks that have uh, that are hard to process. There are really not a whole lot of great data providers in the space. So all those APIs have gaps, they go down, they're missing data, they change, uh, the feeds are full with wash trading and spoofing. So this is a huge issue that you need to, to deal with. Accurate predictions does not mean actionable predictions. So the fact that I tell you the price is going to go up, it doesn't mean that you know how to trade it, right? So trading that prediction is an art in and of itself. So you need to create a model just for that. Maybe not as sophisticated as a predictive models, but, but still. If when models need to execute real time, if I need to give you a prediction and you call us and give me a prediction right now, that's really hard to do. Is most machine learning technology today is designed to execute in batches. You execute them all, takes a minute, output the result, that's great. Executing, we have had to do this, and it took a lot of technical, uh, uh, a, a lot of technical hacks uh, to get it to work uh, efficiently. Uh, Blockchain-based predictive models, they're very fragile. So if you're trying to predict based on blockchain data, uh, be aware that you're vulnerable to all sorts of things. You're vulnerable to large blocks, you're vulnerable to forks, uh, you're vulnerable to all sorts of events, to, you're vulnerable to an exchange just changing the way they interact with the blockchain, and, and then the, all the addresses and things that you were factoring in are not relevant anymore. So we found those models are very, very fragile. When you're once you train a model, once it's in production, you need to retrain it. And knowing how to do that, when to do that, is hard because if you, your retraining goes wrong, the model starts making silly predictions. So what we have learned, so we retrain based on three conditions: either the model performance decline, either every, uh, a couple of weeks have passed by. Or if there is a market event, a relevant market event that we wanted to, to capture. And then we always keep multiple versions of the model in production so you can have uh, you, you can roll back if anything goes goes wrong. Uh, rapid experimentation is key. The key to, to successful prediction is just try ideas, try idea, fail, iterate quickly. So build an infrastructure that in which you can iterate very quickly, easier said than done. Better infrastructure beats better models all the time. So today I will take a mediocre predictive models with a world-class infrastructure that I can optimize, retrain, and all that, that having the, the super predictive model with a poor infrastructure. So investing in infrastructure, the only reason we're able to do this is because we spent a year building a world-class infrastructure for, for this type of problems. Data sources in crypto are very unreliable. So you have issues with blockchain uh, cloning, uh, blockchain data, with order books data, with derivatives. So it's hard to find good providers, solid providers in the in the space. We have a couple of great partners uh, in to, like crypto compare in this area, but those are very very hard to uh, to find. And most deep learning research fails when you apply it to the real world, particularly in crypto. So you have a large body of research. Into, uh, from, from deep learning models, predictive models that look great on paper, when you apply them, they look uh, horrible in, in practice. So let me show you some early results. Let me show you this in the real world today, how it's, uh, how it's working. One of the models that we settled on that, uh, that, we, uh, that we found extremely resilient is this thing called bidirectional long-short-term memory networks. 2017 uh, research, very recent, 
Uh, we landed on a model that is using 120 attributes to predict price, 50,000 parameters, and has one network going forward on time, one going backward on time. This is a little bit uh, technical, but hopefully you get the idea. How do we do this? this? This model in particular is using trading data from different exchanges, Coinbase, Binance, and Bitstamp. Why those three? Because their order books are good. One thing that you don't want to do is deal with exchanges that the order books is full of wash trades and things like that because the model gets confused. So we get the trade, we, we run it through a convolutional layer that came up with 300,000 parameters that could be predictors and narrow it down to those 120, and then we, we use a layer for, for predictions. Some, some results about this, one model that is predicting 10 basis points variations in the next 60 minutes. So every hour I give you give you a prediction. And that model as of last week was doing 68, 68%. You can see the number of times that it predicted bull and it was correct and the number of times that it made a mistake. Then a second model that makes that same prediction but every five minutes. So then it tells you that uh, this time the, uh, the prediction for the next hour and five minutes after and five minutes after. So that model as of last week was also doing 68%, but you can see that it made way to a lot more predictions because it's doing it every five minutes. Uh, and then a third model that is looking for 50 basis points, so a very high uh, uh, variation uh, of price. And that one obviously predicts a lot of new drop because you don't get that many 50 basis points variation, but it's doing almost 70% uh, accuracy. And uh, you can see the accuracy over time of these models that in the last few days, only ones have dipped below 50%. So it tends to be very accurate, it tends to be very, very, uh, very resilient. We're working on all sorts of things. So predictions with blockchain data sets for exchange flows, derivative, we have a couple of models. So we want to have 10 to 12 of these babies done by the, uh, uh, by the end of the year. I hope that has given you a practical perspective of how to do this approach. So a quick summary. Crypto assets are predictable, make no mistake. So you can predict movements in Bitcoin, Ethereum, but you cannot predict it all the time. So under certain market conditions for certain crypto assets, they show predictability, uh, predictable characteristics. The three, uh, the three key steps to this is you need to, to formulate a thesis you need to, so what are you going to predict? You need to select a methodology. How are you going to predict it? And obviously have the infrastructure to run it. From the areas in the, in the, the methodologies, the, the mechanics that, you, that allow you to implement this, deep learning definitely offers a very unique uh, body of research uh, and, and the area that is growing the, the fast. If you want to try this for real, sign up for, for Into the Blog and you're going to have predictions there in a, uh, in a, few, in a few days. That's all I have. Please send me a note if you're interested in this to jr at intotheblog.io. You can contact me through my Medium address. I write almost uh, every day or just reach out to the Into the Blog team. And uh, if you're interested in this subject, please reach out. We would love to hear from you. And I hope this has given you a very practical perspective of how to do predictions in the real world for crypto assets. Thank you very much. Hey, Zeus, absolutely incredible. Um, very, very interesting stuff right up my alley as uh, I have a machine yeah, learning know. and a data science kind of project myself. Um, we have a few questions, but we have time for two. Um, let's, let's go to, to the, the viewers of Blockdown 2.0. Um, what about using outside data sets like from tra traditional financial markets um, as well to, to kind of correlate what's happening outside yeah. the scene and inside? Yeah, so obviously that that's uh, 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 that that's an interesting thesis. So many people believe there is. A, I, I believe there are certain levels of correlation. You have money into crypto assets come from somewhere, uh, right? And so the the thing with with that approach is what you will be looking at is probably the order books and uh, uh, and the price and volume. So think about that if you're going to predict crypto. Uh, being crypto specific gives you an edge, but certainly a thesis and certainly something. So if you, let's say, if you have a particular thesis that money could be flowing from Chinese equities into, into crypto, monitoring the order books and monitoring the great market, the big market indices in, ta, in China and partitioning that and fitting into predictive models is definitely a viable, a viable thesis. That's the thing about this space, right? There's a ton of ideas and it's just trying, trying, trying. And some of those ideas are going to work only on certain market 
uh, conditions, not all the time. Maybe when the Chinese economy, if there is a, if there is a downturn, those theses will prove to be, uh, would, or would perform in a way that is differently than if the economy is booming. Super, great answer. Um, one relative to the project that, that I have founded called Effect.ai, we have basically built uh, an Amazon Mechanical Turk uh, on, on top of the blockchain so we can actually access uh, thousands of people all over the world. We currently have about five or 6,000 individuals that help us sort, structure, and label data sets. I was wondering if any of the pieces of the data sets that you use are things that need human influence to kind of structure, and if so, Give me a call. Maybe you can tell us how that data is structured to turn it into like high quality training sets. Yeah, label data sets is the biggest issue that we have, particularly when it comes to blockchain. So the fact that a blockchain, blockchains are semi-anonymous, it doesn't help when it comes to intelligence. I mean, think about it. You look at, at two addresses. One address is my wallet. One address is a Binance Hot Wallet. In, for most people, that's the same. Right, but, but the semantics are fundamentally different. So having the, the, ca characterizing that, labeling those data sets, whether it's an exchange, an OTC desk, you don't need to know it's Binance, you just need to know something, it's an exchange. Right, so uh, adding labels to that is huge. Most of that you cannot do, I mean, there's some that you can do uh, with automated uh, models, but most of that today requires human intervention, just like in classical machine learning. So projects like Effect.ai allows you to do that. And uh, in the same way that there are similar projects in many areas of machine learning uh, for creating label data sets for different industries. And in order to, to the, the, the higher quality label data you have today, the more efficient your predictive models could be because the dominant school of thought that uh, in, in this market today is supervised learning, meaning you train a model to do something else Right, and it, to train a model, you need label data set. So we spend so much time trying to do this type of things uh, auto, um, to automate it with machine learning models and things like that. And it's very, very difficult. And uh, but you run out of ideas very quickly.